So welcome to this interview at PCI London Valve 2021. Uh, my name is Lars Sandergaard. I'm an interventional cardiologist based in Copenhagen, Denmark. And I'm joined here today uh, by my colleague, Ole de Bagger, who's also an interventional cardiologist uh, in Copenhagen. So what we're going to discuss for the next couple of minutes is uh, what we call commercial alignment. So this has been more relevant, this topic, because we all foreseen that TAVI is going to expand towards patients with longer life expectancy. And these patients are going to be, of course, different from the elderly patient we used to treat with TAVI because we need to have a lifetime management of these patients. Mm -hmm. And one very important topic is the possibility to access the coronary arteries later on after the time procedure. And we saw last year this re-access study, 300 patients undergoing TAVI. And before and after the procedure, the physician was asked to cannulate the coronary arteries. And actually in 7.7% .7 of the patient, it was impossible to access both coronary arteries. And of course, that's going to be crucial as we're moving to patient with longer life expectancy. So that's why a number of different technologies to achieve uh, commercial alignment or even patient-specific commercial alignment has been uh, launched uh, during the last couple of months. And I know all, um, you have been, you've been leading one of these uh, uh, studies here, what they call the co-aligned uh, study. Maybe you can just explain what it's all about. Yeah, in this particular study, we tried to see if a certain patient-specific uh, implantation technique of self-expandable valves was going to be able to implant these transcatheter heart valves in such a way that the commissures of the transcatheter heart valve were aligned with the native commissures. We have previously shown that this is normally not the case if you do not have attention to this, then typically you have a very random implant uh, of these transcatheter heart valves uh, concerning the commissure alignment. But we wanted to see if using a particular technique, we could actually really align these commissures. Yeah, because I think one of the issues about access in the coronary arteries is the case where the leaflet post of these transcatheter heart valves are positioned in front of uh, the coronary osteums. So, so can you just um, try to explain, I mean, there's been uh, suggestion how to introduce uh, these uh, delivery system into the patient, but also how to adjust the position during the implantation. So what, what's the concept? Well, there has been previously described uh, a technique or almost simultaneously with by uh, Dr. Gilbert Tang, where indeed a universal method of, in a way, the specific orientation of inserting the valve, the delivery system in a certain orientation into the uh, insertion sheet, that this could more or less avoid severe coronary uh, overlap with the commissures. However, this is not really true because it, I would say you can significantly reduce the risk, but not prevent this. So um, what we really wanted to obtain is a patient specific, specific to the patient's anatomy. And for doing this, we used actually specific fluoroscopic views, fluoroscopic angulations. So we made use of the right, left coronary cusp overlap view, which is very often obtained in an ario caudal projection of your, of your x-ray beamer. And then uh, in this particular view, we know that the native a uh, commissure between the right and the left coronary cusp is pointed in a certain direction, namely to the right uh, on your, on your x-ray, on your fluoroscopic screen. So making use of this specific commissural orientation of the patient's anatomy, we, were, we wanted to aim to get the commissure of the transcatheter heart valve also aligned with this specific commissure. And of course, this we try to obtain by rotating the delivery systems of the transcatheter heart valves. Yeah, so uh, as, as, as you said rightly, that just introducing the delivery system in a certain way is going to give you a near commercial alignment in most patients, but also as shown by Gilbert Tang, you'll still have around 20% of the patient who have severe commercial misalignment with the leaflet post in front of it. So what you do here is that you do your pre-procedural CT analysis and determine what is your left, right, cost ball view, which is also used in many institutions in order to, to uh, reduce the risk of conductance abnormality. And, and in this view with the valve, uh, across the valve, uh, the, uh, the native aortic valve, you can just do the adjustment. 
uh, Ole, you also showed there was two important factors to actually have patient-specific commercial alignment. Maybe you could just explain yeah. what these factors are and how they're different between uh, different kind of self-expanding valves. Yeah, let me first say, I think, uh, if looking at our total study population group, we were rather successful in obtaining patient-specific commercial alignment. But indeed, it's interesting to look at uh, the, the patients in which we did not obtain this commissure alignment. And what were the reasons for this? Well, indeed, first of all, I would say it's important that when trying to obtain this commissure alignment with your transcutter heart valve, of course, it's mandatory that you have a real good fluoroscopic marker of these commissures. And this is better in specific valves and worse in other valves. I would say, uh, in, a, in a valve like the Accurate platform, it was rather easy to identify the commissural post, or even it was it was helped by the, a free cell, a free stand strut, which really helps to get this alignment. So fluoroscopic markers or radiopaque markers of the commissural post of the transmitter heart valve is really important. If this is missing, we failed in some in five particular cases to really obtain this uh, commissural alignment. Another factor which is important is that of course the delivery system is, is responsive to your manipulation and that demands some kind of flexibility uh, a not too stiff delivery system and this was also a limiting factor especially in for example an able platform where the delivery system is more stiff so it was not always responsive depending on the aortic arch and the tortuosity of, of the patient's anatomy not always responsive on, on the on the torque or on the rotation so these two factors, I think, are really um, yeah, deciding on your success, decisive for your success of, of obtaining consumer alignment. So only in the study, three different platforms forms was uh, examined, uh, the Evolute platform, the Accurate platform, and the Portable platform. So what was the success rate in obtaining patient-specific commercial alignment for these three platforms? Yes, so if we look to the outcomes of this study, so we wanted to avoid moderate or severe commissural misalignment, a situation where the commissural post is very close to the coronary ostium. Well, this could be avoided in 20 out of 20 accurate uh, cases, so meaning 100% success in obtaining commissural alignment or maximally uh, accepting mild commissural misalignments. For the Evolute platform, we had still two out of 20 cases uh, where there was moderate to severe commissural misalignment. And this was mainly due to the fact that the delivery system was not always very responsive to our uh, manipulation. And then there were five out of 20 uh, portico cases where also we, we missed commissural misalignment or we had moderate to severe commissural misalignment. And this was mainly due to the fact that the commissural posts are not always easy visible, especially in in more uh, obese patients. So Ole, apart from easier access to the coronary arteries, could there be other potential benefits of having commercial alignment? Yes, coronary access, of course, the most obvious one, maybe even coronary filling um, could, could be impacted by it. Um, I would say also there is good evidence to, to um, assume that um, if you have commissural misalignment, you also risk maybe more uh, central leak or also that the outer ceiling skirt is more effective when you have commissural alignment. There is bench testing data on this. And then even on the long term, I would say it can have consequences. Uh, there is some uh, in vitro bench tests work also available showing that there is more uh, stress on the leaflets. Uh, shear stress on the leaflets when you have commissural misalignment. So this may also have impact on the durability of this valve. And also, uh, as a, finally, it can have impact on your possibility to do, for example, a basilica-assisted uh, Tavi and Tavi maybe in the future. So in order to keep this possibility open, you have to implant the first Tavi valve for sure with commissural alignment. Is it possible to have commercial alignment using this technique for balloon expandable valves? Well, so far, there is no uh, technique described doing this. So we're probably going to see next generation transcatheter heart valves where it's going to be very easy to identify the leaflet post and also to orientate uh, the delivery system. So the valves are deployed with commercial alignment. And once again, it's going to be critical as we're going to move to patients with longer life expectancy, both to have easier access to the coronary arteries, to have less paralvalve leak, and probably also better durability. 
So with that, I want to thank you, Ole, for, for being part of this and for you who watched the interview. Hope you're going to enjoy the rest of PCI London Valve 2021.